Hey everyone, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. This video is sponsored by Honey. Anyways, I've been working on this project for about three to four months now, so I thought I'd go a little bit into some of the engineering process behind a lot of the tech in the video. So if your name is Johnny Rothberg, feel free to skip the following section. I'll try to keep it brief. So you might have noticed that the CNC base I designed is upside down compared to the actual CNC base, and the reason for this is because there's no reason. I am just stupid. I literally didn't think about what I was doing. Anyways, another big change was the stepper motors I used. I actually bought two kinds of stepper motors. The first I got were these 5 volt 28 BYJ-48 geared stepper motors, which I like a lot because they have this built-in geared reduction, so there's a good amount of torque without drawing too much current. However, I later switched to a more conventional NEMA 17 stepper motor because I needed the motors to be bipolar steppers in order to be compatible with my stepper drivers. The original 28 BYJ-48 stepper motors are unipolar, which means that there are these two usual coils, but then there's this doo-doo fifth wire that's just like, hi, I'm here, I'm useless, and I suck. So I designed everything to work with my big, shiny, new NEMA 17 motors, as shown in the build section earlier. But they stopped working for literally no reason, so I went back to my original 28BYJ-48, oh my god, that's a mouthful, stepper motors, and had to figure out a way to manually convert it to a bipolar stepper. This involved taking off the back, removing a wire, and one of the PCB connections, but in the end, it seemed to work fine. For control, I bought an Arduino-compatible CNC shield, and when I powered it up for the first time, I followed the Amazon product image to see how to orient my stepper drivers, but the Amazon image from the purveyor was incorrect and I ended up frying the entire board and burning my hand. I needed to buy a whole new board, and this time I checked every connection with the multimeter to make sure the exact same thing wouldn't happen, and it worked, so that's nice. The table has built-in lighting that I designed. I didn't want to buy an expensive LED strip that I would only need a few feet of, so instead of that, I diverted the 12 volt power source I was using with some 330 ohm resistors in parallel after four frustrating hours of determining the LED voltage drop, and I diffused the light as best I could with some sandpaper and parchment paper. If you can't already tell, the metal ball in the sand is actually being dragged around by a magnet which moves around underneath the table. I designed to use some 5mm cube magnets, but the way that these naturally orient actually makes it super difficult to get a strong magnetic field, so I had to forcibly cram them all in a formation that aligns their north poles, which was way more difficult than it sounds but ended up with a much greater field strength that allowed it to better attract the sphere on the sand. Speaking of sand, I tested the table with some real sand at first, except upon powering it on for the very first time, it dragged around with an unpleasant grinding noise and it was just horrible. I did some research and found out that I might need a more grippy surface under the table to prevent it from slipping, as well as a special type of sand that hamsters bathe in. Hamster sand. In the end, however, I just ended up using baking powder. It still slips a little bit, but I'm okay with that. One of the last issues I encountered and I'm still working out is that the limit switches that tell the software when the machine has exceeded its X and Y boundaries freak out sometimes, and the idea is that when the machine moves too far out of its boundaries, the switches are pressed and everything goes into lockdown, because that's not supposed to happen. However, I've noticed that sometimes the machine will be running and it'll trigger a limit switch even when it's nowhere near the boundary. After scratching my head for literally weeks trying to solve this, I'm guessing this has something to do with electromagnetic interference from the motor signals. The currents drawn generate magnetic fields that interact with the wire that is connected to the sensor causing a false positive. I thought I could add some resistors and be done with it, but I actually came upon a really interesting discovery. TTL, or old school transistor transistor logic, pulls high around 3 to 5 volts, but the inputs to the logic gates are current sourcing, meaning pulling an input to ground is as simple as adding some pull-up resistors to a switch. Today, most logic uses some sort of metal oxide silicon device like NMOS or PMOS transistors. These MOSFETs are voltage operated, meaning they require extremely small levels of current to drive inputs. Noise can still swamp a pull-up resistor with the old TTL inputs, which is why RC filters are needed. In our case, we want to get rid of this noise that's caused by the power supply or pulse width modulation or motors or wiring or whatever. So with our normally open switches, we should probably not only apply a pull-up resistor to the 5 volt logic high, but also add some sort of parallel filter capacitor to ground and slap a serious resistor on there somewhere too, just to be safe. Oh, guess what? The limit switches already have that built in so none of this actually matters. Anyways, I'm already looking for ways to improve this project. I've got these new Wi-Fi compatible ESP32 boards which I'm looking to interface and hopefully make this table wireless and add a few other upgrades to further improve the reliability and consistency of the pattern drawing. Oh yeah, it's called Sable because like sand, table, sable. Also because sable is French for sand and you already know I like that French jazz. Anyways, that's it for this video. Bye. Oh, and Johnny Rothberg, if you're watching, I was a joke earlier. Thank you for watching my videos. I know you want to be. What did you say?
Nothing. I like the green, green. Please stop saying. Please stop saying that.